if I could be anything, or well, be one thing, it'll be a photographer. Ain't nobody ever invited me to nothing like this, man. I actually wanted to do this, like interview people. Yeah. But nobody's ever interviewed me. I'm so, gonna interview you too, man. This ain't no, this is a conversation. That's all it is. Uh, yeah, so basically, bro, I came up with the idea to do this like two years ago, right? Right. But I never, you know, the one of the hardest things to do is to get um, like guests right. and make it make sense. So um, like the first person I wanted to, have a conversation with the interview or whatever was uh the, my first episode rain i shot him a message a minute ago and so he just he had just hit me back right before we did it so i was right. like all right cool let's go ahead and do it so i didn't know how i was gonna make this shit happen or nothing so i just went in i just was like all right let's do zoom i just had a conversations plus i'm big into the mental health right so I'm like, it just makes sense and then business so the, the overarching thing is like business, mental health, but then we can talk about whatever else we want to fucking talk about. You know what I mean? For sure, for sure. And, so, and that's the thing. That's why I said it's important because somebody was like, yo, you got a podcast. I'm like, bro, really? It's just a conversation. Conversation. Platform. That's it. And I think sure. that's something that's been missing. Like, we don't really talk to each other. Like, especially now, I feel like it's the best time for us, especially with businesses, to really just talk and share information, bro. Like, no and I no doubt. Think, yeah, that shit missing a, 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 on a whole lot of levels. But I know you big on the social media. You know, you, yeah. you're in jail right now, which is cool. I'm in jail for two. I got two days left. Yeah. yeah but you still got a phone. So this does right. apply. So what's your most used emoji? Probably the praying hands. I know that ain't sexy. <laughs> but the praying hands is my number one, my most used emoji. It's like, thank you. It, as far like as far as one emoji. Yeah. The, the the thank you. You know, it's like when people saying, you know, like, uh, especially like Instagram, like, you know, nice photo, man. Thank you. Oh, uh, you're right. Because you do get a lot of compliments on the photo. Yeah, for sure. You get a lot of, we're going to come back to them photos in a minute. Oh, go ahead. Who am I? Yeah. I'm a girl dad. You know, Kobe, yeah. Kobe Def made that famous. Um, fortunately, but I have three daughters. <laughs> so I'm a father, uh, a veteran, a retiree. Very proud of that because, you know, a lot of people are veterans, but to go that 20 years um, is tough. With this photography, I can instantly see how a person feels when I take, when I take a picture and show them the camera and they damn near start crying or have started crying. And it's like, oh, is that me? So you instantly boost someone's self-esteem. I make people look and feel good about themselves. Right. Well, I make people look good and I make them feel good. And with that, it's like instant gratification. Cause like when I, you know, in the Air Force, you know, I'm doing something, I'm working on something, but I don't really see the end result of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm working on. I don't know who it, where this product is going to. I have a, a sense of where it's going. What's that behind you, man? What's that? Which one? This one? You got a, some t-shirts or something? Nah, no, these I, are my books. These are my books. This is how I package oh. them up. So this is okay. how I package them up before I, you know, and then I just, that's the uh, certificate of authenticity. For sure. And then the book, and then I package it up. I just had to do them pre pre pack them so I can go ahead and just throw them in a the box and, and take them to the post office. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah. You don't you don't play. You uh, in the war? You still in the war? Yeah, man. I got three more years, bro. Three, okay. Yeah, that's that's that ain't nothing. Three more years, and it's it's a it's a rizzy. Like you, I know you happy. You on you up out of there? Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still, yeah, I'm still hut two, three, four, and like I still work with them. I ain't gonna say where I don't know where this going. Okay. You know I mean? Hey, I that's what I said. You know, OPSEC. But yeah, man, I'm still I'm still hut two, three, four, you know, out here. Mm -hmm. Out there. Um, I'm on the yard. Okay. Ain't but no uh man. but as a civilian, of course. Yeah. How's that? How's that like being on the other side of it? It's cool, man, because like now I can um it's just a little bit more freedom, like mentally, you know what I mean? Like as far as I still have to conduct myself a certain way, but it's not to dream of, okay, I'm, I'm wearing the uniform and 
everything I say is not a representation of me. It's a representation of the Air Force. So I got to walk us up. I actually really never did that. I still was me my entire 20 years. Yeah. But now I'm not worried. Before I was yeah. like, man, I'm going to go down because I'm going to say this. Or I'm going to say that. Or they going to me too me. But before the whole me too thing, was not like uh, as far as like me too as far as uh, inappropriate behavior, but me too as far as like uh, caring, getting caring. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to get. Karen being the Air, in the Air Force, you know, like I'm gonna say something on my post or Facebook and I'm gonna get Karen. Yep. So that's something I was worried about. But now I'm not worried about it as much. I can really be myself. Yeah, so. I, I, I made a post the other day about that. Like I said, basically I got three years left and I can really say what I wanna say. Exactly. And one of my homeboys, he's in too, he was like, hey, why not say it now? I'm like, bro, you know why. <laughs> yeah. You know why. And it's not, it's not so much of I'm afraid of you know, it's more so that caring factor, like you just said. Right. Yeah. Somebody, all it takes is for one person to think the opposite of whatever you meant for it to be, and then it's all they can, like, however they want to twist. They can take, they can take a clip. They can, you know, like sound bites. It's but yeah. they can do it with the media, with the like this whole Capitol Hill. Matter of fact, Washington, I'm repping your state. I hey, shouldn't even. Oh, be, hey, this, uh, much love. Yeah, but yeah. um, that wasn't even a strategic either. I just had it in the closet. Yeah. See how the stars line up, bro? Yeah, man. <laughs> but, you know, with the whole Capitol Hill and all that, I could say X, Y, and Z, how I feel about it, but be considered racist because I'm pointing out racism. Right. It's like, it's like, man, no, I'm telling you what is racist. Like, I'm suspended right now on Facebook. For real? You in Facebook jail right now? I'm in Facebook jail. I got two more days. Wow. So that's crazy. For pointing out the obvious. It's like, I'm not there tearing up the building. That makes okay. you think, though. That makes you think, because it's like, how how am I wrong for pointing out the racism? Exactly. It makes no sense. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think well, that's I'm, racist. Racist. I'm race baiting because I'm pointing this out. Huh? What do you mean? I didn't create this. You know what's crazy, bro? Like, that's why I feel like as many years as we've been dealing with racism, right? That's why I'm not super optimistic that the shit going to go away. It's because every time we talk about it or point out racism, racism somehow flips and twists it, but then what racism has on its side is um, privilege. Like we saw with the capital thing. Exactly. So like, how do you exactly. beat that? How do you beat that? You know what I mean? Man, and it's like, man, like we do, we have feelings. I'm still a human being, so I'm supposed to look at this and, and be okay with it. Yeah. You know? And you see the people that's out there, it's like filled with hate. Yeah. And they, they want to reference the, well, you guys, this summer you were out there with your Black Lives Matter. Okay, why were we out there? Yeah. Why were we out there? You we're out there because uh, you know, killing unarmed civilians. Mm -hmm. I don't care black or white, y'all killing the cops are killing unarmed civilians. Yep. So you should be mad as well. That's, that, the, point. That's the point they missed though. They missed that whole point of we're not it's not necessarily like only because they're killing black people. I don't yeah. care if they're white out there protesting, whatever. Like if you're killing somebody unjustly, unarmed, it's wrong. Right. I don't understand why they don't, they're not upset as, exactly. as upset as we are. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I think for the first time, you know, this year, I mean, well, last year, for the first time we saw, it wasn't just us out there protesting. Right. They were out there, pro. they they got sick of it. Yeah. So, but what I noticed was like my coworkers, they was like, look at those guys out there. Look at those, you know, I'm like, it wasn't just black people out there. Right. Actually, when I look at these different videos, it's like majority majority of the races out there so you know but you're only mad at we're the only animals out there yeah so it's like man it's easier it's easier to do that i mean yeah. and when you look at history because i love history man so like when you even go back it's not that there weren't i guess they call them um, if you put labels and stuff on it allies so there's been white people that have been protesting with us for a long time if you look at the like when they boycotted the buses and all that stuff, even Selma, yeah, yeah. all of that had sprinkles of white faces in there, right? right? And I say that not like disrespectfully, but sprinkles of white yeah. faces in there. Yeah. Um, so it's not, and, and just like now, like they, if you look at Twitter, bro, when I go on Twitter and I, when I was looking at Trump's, uh, Donald Trump's posts, if you look at the comments under them, majority of them is white people that do not like him. Yeah. So it's not like it's just us. Right. But that's exactly. That's the portrait that's being painted, which is weird. I'm glad they banned them because I was looking. I was thinking, like, they banned Farrakhan. Mm. Um, 
I don't know what month are they banned them, but I'm like, man, you know how he's going, how is he going to get his message out? So they banned them on, uh, they banned them on all platforms. I think he might even be banned on YouTube. That's so I'm like, he's going to get his message out. But what they did was they spawned, he was a martyr. I mean, you know, he's still alive. Mm -hmm. But what they did was, okay, now everybody galvanized and now you have 50,000 other people making videos instead of just Farrakhan. Right. So, you know, your, your Nuri Muhammad's and your, uh, um, I can't think of all these other NOI, FOI people. Yeah, it's, um, a lot of, it's a lot of platforms out there. Yeah, but Push you can't, sh can't shut them down. But what, so also by them shutting Trump down, that could also spawn other millions of people to, you know, to uh, rebel on social media. So it's like, man, I don't know. I think I still want to cut the head of the snake. Yeah, I think so. you still gonna have, have people that are so blinded by whatever whatever it is, whatever it is they're trying to accomplish. Because, bro, to this day, like today, there's people that still think that Trump will win the election. I saw it with my own eye. Like, people were really saying that. It's a chick on Facebook try, trying to argue with me right now. I'm not going back and forth with her, though. Yeah. She keeps trying to argue with me right now, talking about I'm blind and uneducated. Trump will become the president again. They already did whatever recount. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I don't know, bro. <laughs> that makes it's me like, think, though. What do they have yeah. up your sleeve? Right. And they're supposed to... Um, I got... How do I have more intel than they do? It's like they're supposed to go back on the 20th. Yeah. They're supposed to go back on the 20th and do the same thing. And they probably have more hundreds of thousands of people out there Protesting. On protesting. Protesting. Pro, yeah, I was going to say protesting. Yeah. And that's the other thing that gets twisted. It's like some people want to, I feel like people secretly admire us and hate us at the same time. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is because if you notice, they try to utilize the same thing that we had, that we say when we're, because we're really um, oppressed, right? We really right. have oppression. But they manufacture oppression and try to, you know, say they're being oppressed. And then they use the same stuff we're using. Say her name. Uh, whatever. Like, they try to yeah. look the last summer when y'all, but when y'all was protesting, like, so you want you want this so bad. Why you want this so bad? Yeah. But why were we, pro they never look at the root problem. Nah. Why are we protesting? Unjustly deaf. Yeah. Why are you protesting? This term is up. Yeah. Like, how does that even make sense? Like, like I can't wrap my head around it, which is why I said at a certain point, I won't even go back and forth with people. You know, yeah. like that shit did. I'm not talking to you. I go back. It'll be mine. I go back and forth if I feel like I'm not talking to a brick wall. Yeah. Because like, for a better example is like at my job. Yeah. So, you know, I'm going back and forth with these coworkers about these very same issues. And if I feel like he's lost, it's a wrap. I'm done, you know, like to talk to a fool. Yeah. But if I feel like, okay, he may not get it right now, mm -hmm. but he'll get it next week or next month, or he'll go home and think, damn, you know, he might have been right about X, Y, and Z. I was talking about the whole Kaepernick thing. Yeah. And I'm like, listen, man, you know, he's kneeling. And, you know, they always say, well, the military, and he's disrespecting the military. And I'm like, well, how come I understand? I served 20 years. So the guy that was saying the military, the military never served. Or, or he served, he served, uh, he separated. He did his three or four and got out. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, he's disrespecting the military. I'm like, I did 20 years. How come I understand why he's kneeling and you don't? Right. It's like, because you want the narrative, narrative to be he's disrespecting the military, not police brutality. And he vocalized. I could see if he said, F the military. Mm -hmm. But he said, this is why I'm kneeling. And this is what it was, because before he started off sitting down, and it was recommended by a veteran to say, well, why don't you kneel instead? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, man, um, how come you guys don't get it until 50 years later? Right. Like, with Martin Luther King, like, they were like, so they always throw, well, Martin Luther King was a peaceful protest. I'm like, yeah, and they threw rocks, at, <laughs> water holes, put dogs on them, punched them in the face, all this, you know, like, but you hold Muhammad Ali in such a high regard. Yep. I'm like, but during that time, they hated him. Mm -hmm. During Martin Luther King's time, they hated him. Why does it take y'all 50 years to understand that something is wrong? Right. So that's my conversation at work. And I think that I was penetrating, like I, when I was telling my coworker that, why does it take y'all 50 years to understand? And then y'all act like y'all love him. I think it was getting up in there. I don't know if I turned them all the way around, but 
I just want to throw something. I don't want to battle for the sake of battling. I want to. I want you to plant a seed. Yeah, you plant, plant a seed. Plant a seed for sure. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think people that are open will will be receptive to that. You know what I mean? But right, right. There's something that they don't. They just they're not gonna see it. Their worldview is just different, bro. And you asked them. I asked like. I was like, well, why do you support Trump? They couldn't tell me why they supported Trump. Yeah. I'm like, what is his what are his policies? Well, he's just a so one guy he did he was able to, was like uh, uh Biden wants to take your they can't tell me why they support Trump, but they can tell me why they don't support Biden. It was like, well, Biden wants to take your guns away. I'm like, so that's what you're standing on? Right. Like, and I probably got more guns than the other than the than the guy that's supporting Trump. I'm like, but well, that's what you're standing on. I got a whole I got a gang. I probably got a gun in my desk. <laughs> But it's like, but that's not going to be a deal breaker for me because this guy is anti-gun and this guy is pro-gun. So I'm going to vote for Trump because he's pro-gun. Right. It's, let's be real about it. You're voting for Trump because you know that he's racist. Like you never seen anybody get carried out on the stretcher at a Biden rally. Right. So it's like, man, how do you not see what's happening here? And when he's and it's one thing for somebody to get punched in the face at a Trump rally, and it's another thing for Trump to incite it. Exactly. And, you know, like uh, I can't remember exactly what, but I don't know if you've seen you've seen a video that this different black people getting punched in the face as they're trying to get out of the Trump rally. I've seen that. And it's like, and, and everybody's just cheering him on, and he's like, it's like, man, it's like. So they're like, well, how is Trump racist? I'm like, that's how. Yeah. Like, how do you not see this? Or his family uh, wouldn't let blacks rent apartments, like his dad or whatever wouldn't let black wouldn't rent to black people. Uh, Trump taking out that ad. Or, man, I, I know this is getting crazy. Like, I know this is not. No, part no of I know you're talking about so when, he took out, when he took out the ad for the uh, yeah. Central Park. Uh, Central Park, like uh, something about you know, uh, I don't think it was something to the effect of killing them. Basically, like the hit on him. in the paper. Yeah. So it's like, man. So. How, not know that he's racist so you're voting for him because he's racist that's not that's not a deal breaker for you no because it doesn't affect them if it doesn't affect them they don't care right and then, and then in a lot of people's eyes like i've noticed that even within the military right mm -hmm. if, if, if it's not overt enough for them it's not racism to them yeah so like we can see it we know what racism and we can pick it out we can read between the lines for sure. They have to see something overt. Like it has to literally be, hey, I'm being racist right now. This is what I'm doing, blah, 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 blah. Or I'm right. doing this because I'm being racist. That's what they need to hear. Yeah. I've seen it recently. You know what I mean? I've seen it and heard it recently, which is crazy to me. Like, and that's why I'm glad I do. So I don't know if you see. So I started me and a team that I put together. We started the Stronger Together initiative. So basically, we have like group sessions where we talk to people on the base and just talk about mental health pretty much it's like a group mental health session for sure and uh we did one and i don't speak about what goes on in there because you know we don't talk about what goes but i can share basically what happened um we were talking to a particular group and it was a white guy and we were talking about racial disparity pretty much so white guy from he said he's in his words he was like I'm probably one of the most regular white guys you'll meet, whatever. And I forget where he said he was from, like New Hampshire or Maine, somewhere that's not typically associated with black people. Yeah. And he said he didn't, he didn't know, or he didn't, he never really lived around or, or worked around any black people until he joined the military. And being at Atlanta, he's been around the most black people he's been around in his life. Yeah. So right there that tells you something. And mind you, he's in a high ranking position. Yeah. So how does that affect his leadership, right? Like, because mm -hmm. he's already has a preconceived notion of us when he sees us. Right. So if he's never pretty much seen us until he's been in the military. Yep. And then, then so, all your TV. Yep. And so Game. when bro, right. that's not even the craziest part. The craziest part was when he 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 mentioned that uh he said when he sees a black guy. Like, you know, an athletically built black guy, like he could be in a grocery store and he right. sees an athletically built black guy. He thinks, man, that guy could really beat the shit out of me. Right. And I'm thinking, like, why would you even think that? Why is that a thought process off top? Like, why do you see a, black, a big black guy be like, damn, he really could probably beat me up? 
He probably right, but <laughs> <laughs> he's probably right. But like, why is that on your mind? That's the thought process, though. Why does he want to beat you? <laughs> so, like, <laughs> what did you do? Why do you assume that's what I want to do to you? And yeah. like, bro, I thought about it too. Like, cause when I see a big white guy, I don't think, man, that white guy, he probably beat me down. Like, I don't think that. No, I think, oh, he's, he works out a lot. Yeah. That's probably, my first probably, thought, not that he can whoop my ass. <laughs> can like, I don't think, a, think if I can whoop, I mean, I don't know, I know plenty of people can whoop my ass, but I don't think who can whoop my ass. That. Right. It's not daily thought process. So the deeper part of that, cause somebody mentioned, oh man, you know, there's it's, it's nothing wrong with that. You know, I was like, no, there is something wrong with that. And the reason why mm. is cause imagine he's a cop. Mm. You're going to think when he pulls the big athletic built black guy over and yeah. ask him to get out the car. Yeah. Uh, now he's already on guard. Like, oh, this guy could probably whoop my ass. Like, so right. now, now he's a threat. Off, yeah. off the rip, he's a threat. Mm -hmm. And so I just thought about that in terms of, man, that's how a lot, he's not the only one that thinks like that. Yeah. How did y'all even get on that? You say he was a commander? He wasn't a command. He, he was, I won't say what his rank was, but he was up there. Okay. So the thing is, in the, in the Strong Together sessions, it's, it's pretty much everybody's just talking about, um, Whatever is affecting them, but this particular session we were talking about racial disparity. Okay, I got you, got you. Yeah, so we were talking okay. about race and you know racial, you know all that stuff. So that was just something that he mentioned. But and it, it, to his credit, though, he was trying to say that he's trying to um, get rid of his his um, unconscious bias. Yeah. So like he's he's he really. I don't. I 100% don't think he's racist in, in any way, but it's just how he grew up. He doesn't really like how he grew up in the sense of like, okay, this is these are the things I was kind of taught in a way, but right. I knew it not to be true. So I don't want it to I don't want to feel that way. So I, right. I I think he's cool, but at least he was honest enough to say that. You know what I mean? Some people won't yeah. even say that. That's one good thing about the military. It's like uh, you may be working with somebody that you otherwise wouldn't cross paths with. Exactly. You know? so that's a blessing. And social media is a blessing and a curse at the same, you know, because you're interacting with people that you probably wouldn't otherwise interact with. So Plus if, it, gives you, people, it gives people beer goggles too. You know what I mean? They, they get a little tougher than what they would really be. Because you weigh in Wisconsin. So, um, you know, you know, I, I kind of like it. What? I kind of like, you know, you being a, you can, you can be at this internet. I like it when they don't have these private profiles, you know, yeah. like, but well, if you hide behind a profile, private profile typing all this gangster stuff or all this racist stuff like it's like that's so cowardly but when you leave your stuff open yeah. leave your profile open and type all that you know it's like okay now i can i like being able to see who my you know you have overt racism and, and covert racism i like to i like to know who i'm dealing with yeah stand behind stand behind yeah. your shit <laughs> right right i feel the same way about people in the military like at least if you are honest i know who i'm dealing with yeah Obviously, don't be too disrespectful, but at least let me know. Who you are. Your yeah, your lane. Oh, I, I like, you know, they got it where you, go, you can't have the Confederate flags anymore. I'm like, no, well, that's good, good or bad thing. It's like, yeah, I kind of like you having that flag on there. So you know who you're dealing with, right? Right, and it's like, oh well, it's not racism; it's part of the heritage. It's like, come on, man. So that means it's part of your heritage. Who you fooling? <laughs> yeah, who you fooling, man? <laughs> All right. So if you were a wrestler. What would be your entrance song, like the theme song while you coming out? Man, it got to be some Red Man or something. Time for some action. Some, some Red Man. got to be something like that. Something hype, man. Something crazy. Tupac, hit him up. But, so, so what made you decide? Because a lot of people start doing photography as just like a hobby. Right. Some guys that I, I know of, they started doing it for other reasons, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but not, me. not me. But yeah, not me. I know not you. Hey, look. Yeah. But uh, what... What was it that made you decide that you wanted to turn it into a business? So I started off, I had like a little Sony, you know, the little Sony cameras, like before cell phones had, cell phones were out, mm -hmm. but every cell phone didn't have a camera on it. Right. So the little Sony joints. Okay. You remember them? Like it was a point and shoot. Yeah, the little point and shoot. Camera. Everybody had little cameras, even like dudes, women, it wasn't nothing. We had these cameras because cell phones weren't there yet as far as camera quality. So I had my little Sony joint and I would take like little selfies and before it was before it was a word selfie. Mm -hmm. I would take like little selfies and um for MySpace. Okay. And um and on MySpace I would see certain people that had pictures that looks like 
that ain't no selfie. What kind of picture is that? You know, they had these, these photo shoots. Mm. I didn't know what to go about doing, you know, that's something on TV. It's like a, a model or, or Tyra Banks or something like that. They do photo shoot. But how does a regular person do a photo shoot? These people have photo shoots on MySpace. Yeah. So, but fast forward, I, you know, I got my little selfie. I'm put my, you know, so I, cause you know, MySpace is like a damn, it was a dating app. Yeah. So I got my selfies and then, you know, the comment and boom, I'm talking to somebody way over here, way over there. And it's like, man, this is crazy. So, um, but anyway, I broke that little, uh, I dropped that little Sony camera. So I broke that camera. In the meantime, all this stuff is happening all at once. So I'm, I'm working at this barbershop on Ward, Changing Faces Barbershop. Shout out if they ever get to see this. I'm working at Changing Faces Barbershop and this barbershop had a fashion show. So the auditions for the fashion show was at the barbershop. I'm the barber, I'm cutting hair. Mm -hmm. So, but the auditions is right in front. They walking through the barbershop, models walking through the barbershop, auditioning for this fashion show. Whoever this um, fashion show coordinator was or caster was, she was like, hey, why don't you come walk? Pointing to me, I'm cutting hair. Just mm -hmm. looking at like, you know, okay. She was like, why don't you come walk? I'm like, I, I don't know nothing about, what is, what's that? I don't know how to, you know, that's modeling. I don't do all that. I don't know how to, I'm, at the time, very uh, introverted. I'm still introverted now. Um, ironically yeah. but uh but anyway she called me out to walk so i was like well shit what the hell i walked in this fashion show for my barbershop and the caster um she was like yeah i want you to walk up in, in the fashion show so basically to make a long story short now i'm now like locally modeling mm. me and um so i'm like this is crazy so now i'm now i'm in a loop i'm telling you how this all comes together so now i'm in the loop of modeling photography or whatever kind of so because when you go to these rehearsals for the fashion show it's a room full of models and it's probably 40 women and maybe three guys so they'll be like um hey can you put this baby all on me or whatever i'm like of course I'm, this is not like <laughs> I'm just in the auditions, I mean, in the, uh, in the practice for the month. So I'm like, can you put this baby? I'm like, so I'm saying this all for a reason. <laughs> so, um, and I'm like, man, this is, this is crazy. Like, this is how they do it. Okay, and then everybody's walking around and changing. Everybody's changing, walking through naked, all this other stuff. And I'm like, man, this is, they like, yeah, this is how it is. You, you got to change, you got to hurry up and get back. You ain't got time to go hide and go in the bathroom. Everybody changing backstage. Yeah. So. I say, I say that to say well, I was around it. So that's how I got around these different models and different things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, so again, I'm breaking this camera that I had. Once I broke this camera, I got some insurance money. But I, I know I'm all over the place. I'm going to wrap it up. But I got this insurance money because the house that I was living in, um, I, I moved out and got an apartment and rented it out. I know that sounds counterproductive, but I, I had I had plans. And this is so, all you was in the military, right? You still in the military? I was in the military, so I got an apartment and rented out my house. And um, but the tenant burnt up the, the house. So from that I got some insurance money. Mm -hmm. So um, and then I wrecked my car the same, probably the same month or whatever. So my car, my house caught on fire, I wrecked my car. I'm like, what is going on in my life? Yeah. So but by that happening was it gave me some insurance money to replace my camera, my little selfie camera. Mm -hmm. So when I research something, I always look highest price first. I don't care what it is. I can be looking up a TV. I'm gonna go highest price first mm -hmm. because I figured that's what the quality is. Right. Even whether I can afford it or not. So when I'm looking to replace my little Sony camera for my space selfies, I type highest price first. When I type highest price first, I saw the, photo the digital SLR, like the photography camera. Right. When I saw this camera, I'm just trying to replace my little camera. When I saw that camera, I was like, that's the camera that my photographer uses. Yeah. Shoots me. I'm like, if I get, then it started off, it was just like stuff started. I was like, if I get that, so I called my photographer. I'm like, hey man, I'm looking at this camera. If I get this camera, will you show me? Because I know this ain't no, the other one's just point and shoot. Ain't no instructions. Yeah. But I'm like, if I get this camera, will you show me how to use it? So he was like, yeah. So I got, so that's why I went with Canon. Because he's a can. My, my OG had Canon. Right. Mike Anderson is his name. And I'm like, okay. So he uses Canon. He'll show me how to use it. 
So I'm already walking in these fashion shows. So now I got models already because we, you know, we interact and I know them next we work in this fashion show together. Now it's a loop. Mm -hmm. So now they're like, well, you in the other fashion show, what other fashion show? This one, I'm gonna put you down. So I'm, so I'm in this circle of um, fashion shows and whatever. So I'm doing, I'm doing all these events in, in uh, 757 yeah. and Atlanta and DC, the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. So uh, Browner Brothers in Atlanta and Milky Way in DC. So, so I already had a network of models mm -hmm. and I already had a, a mentor. So when I picked it up, I'm over there. I'm at this guy's house every day. Like, hey, man, how do you? I don't think when he said, yeah, I'll help you. I don't think he knew what kind of fire I had lit. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm over there. I'm like, hey, man, how you do this? How you shoot this? How is this? This is too dark when I shoot it. This is too light when I do it. How do I do this? How do I edit? How do I move? So I'm at this guy. I'm probably so aggravating to him because I'm like asking questions and questions and questions and questions. Not calling. I'm over there. I pull up. Mm -hmm. And I'm at his house, man. Hey, how you do this? How you do this? But he embraced me, I guess, because he realized, you know, understood the fire that I had, that, that I wasn't a fly by night. It wasn't yeah. to be girls. And I said, the reason why I said the backstage, because I was already around. It wasn't like I picked this up to be around girls. I already was around them. Yeah, you could have been so, around them on the other. On the yeah, other I'm, so, I'm yeah. modeling the fashion show, all, having, putting baby oil on my, so it wasn't like. That could have been enough right there if that was a. Yeah, yeah. I could have just continued to do that. And the only reason I didn't do that, because I was 28 at this, I'm already 28 years old at this point. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm just walking in local fashion shows and I'm like, but I'm still in the Air, Air Force. I still got 10 years left. I still like, what am I, I'm not getting out because uh, I'm already past my 10 year mark. Mm -hmm. So, um, but anyway, to make a long story short, so I got pushed in the pool. He's like, what does that have to do with photography? I got pushed in the pool when I was like 13 or probably 12 or 13, got pushed in the pool mm -hmm. because I was going around pushing everybody else in the pool. Okay. Pushing everybody else in the pool. I thought it was funny. I couldn't swim myself, but I'm pushing everybody in the pool at this pool party. This bully dude, Skimper, Rodriguez Hargit. I'm saying all these names just in case people ever see this. But this bully named Skemper, Rodriguez Hardy, pushed me in the pool. Yeah. And I couldn't swim, and it was like karma. But as he pushed me in the pool, I'm kind of like, nobody's jumping in to help me because I'm pushing everybody else in the pool. Yeah, they're like, yeah, that's what you get. He pushed me in the pool, and now, holy shit, oh, okay. I, I figured it out while I'm in there. Nobody wasn't helping. I could have died, sink or swim. This is a real, yeah. real life sink or swim. So I could, I'm like, okay. You know, I'm doing a little this thing to stay up. Doggy paddle jump. I can do this until I get to the edge. Yeah. I say that to say this. So I'm in. I'm at the shoot with this photographer. One photographer. He's he's doing a photo shoot of his own. Mm -hmm. He says, "Hey, shoot this real quick. I'll be right back." He hands me his camera while there's models on the backdrop and says, "Shoot this real quick. I'll be right back." I got models in front of me. I ain't no photographer. I'm just trying to learn. Yeah. He pushed me in the pool. I, I see what you did. Yeah, I see what you did. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm shooting, uh, like, again, got these, not no amateur, like these, I got models in front. He's already the biggest photographer in Virginia, top five in Virginia at this point. And I'm a nobody. I ain't even on the, nobody even knows I'm a photographer yet. I'm still the model. Right. So, and, and Barbara and Air Force, all that type stuff. So um, when he did that, and he came back upstairs. I didn't know what he was doing at that time, but it clicked in. Oh, so when he came back upstairs, I had some great photos. Mm -hmm. And but he already set the settings, and I wasn't moving settings around. He had he handed me the camera with the settings already set, but I was able to frame it a certain way, and that's a big part of it too. The angles so I, and all that. Yeah. The angles and frame it a certain way, and connect with the model. So. From that moment now, there's no fear. You know, you want to prepare first before you do this. Everything I wanted to do, I want to prepare before I do it. Like I wanted to do a YouTube channel. It's like, well, I got to prepare first. I got to get the lights first. I got to get the man. I got to get this. Go in. Mm -hmm. So there was no preparing. So at that point, it's like, yes, still prepare. But if I keep trying to get everything perfect before I begin, I'm never going to begin because I'm always say, well, yeah, but I need another desk. Oh, well, you know, I need an iMac. Well, you know, I need, no, nah, go in and build as you go. That's, that's what I say. You, you get lost in the planning stage. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, lost in the planning stage. Because you want everything, because you do have the knowledge to plan, 
-hmm. then you over plan and then you never start. So with me, I'm going through that right now where I'm doing the photography, but like I said, mentioned YouTube, I'm gonna get back to the other thing, but um, it's like, man, I want to do the YouTube, but I need another mic. Mm -hmm. And I need to, you know, I got to get a uh, Final Cut Pro first. Or I got it, man, start the damn thing with my phone. You know, people love you. They don't necessarily, you know, love your, how great your production is. They will appreciate that, but they love you. Exactly. So that's what I'm going through now and just remembering those principles from starting with photography. But to make a short story long, or a long story short, how I got into photography was walking into fashion shows, breaking my camera, house catching on fire, wondering, and I'm like, why is this happening to me? Mm -hmm. Why is my house catching on fire to get the insurance money to start the photography? Why did I wreck my car? Gave me another car. You know, like destroy and rebuild. Everything so like, makes sense. Happened to you. Why am I losing my house? Why am I losing my I got all that stuff back tenfold. Right. You know what I mean? I never would have got another because I never would have got another car. I, I had a 94 cord and I would have drove, I would have been driving it to this day. See? But it wrecked, which caused me to get to upgrade. Yeah. So that's yeah. a that's a good that's a good story slash lesson on because you know a lot of times we think when things happen to us right it could be something bad and we think why is this happening to me and then right. get down about it but glass half full you know it's all for a reason like yeah. all that worked out in your uh, in your favor in a way so you ever seen that meme it's a meme like um it's Jesus so that's a touchy subject yeah <laughs> but it was Jesus and he had this big old Teddy. I, we know why this. Well, I I, we'll, I can go into why this is touch something, but he had this big old teddy bear behind his back. Mm -hmm. You seen this meme? I think I've seen it. He's got this big old giant teddy bear behind his back. Jesus. Uh huh. The little girl's got a little teddy bear. Mm -hmm. Jesus is asking her for the little teddy bear. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, give me the little teddy bear. She's like, don't want to give it up. He's got this big. He wants to take this one to give her a bigger one. Big one. Yeah. But she's like. I don't want to give this up. That goes into like, well, why is this happening to me? Yeah. And kind of like, it's character, some things are character building. It's like, yeah. well, why, you know, why, why did this happen to me? Why not you? Yeah. You know, and once you start thinking about it like that, you'll look, you go about things. And it's, I always reference memes because memes are, I'm a big meme. Like that's, that makes my day. Yeah. But there was one thing that said, um, life is 10% what happens to you. And ninety percent, what do you what you make out of it, or something to that point, something to that effect. I'm probably misquoting it, but um, whatever happens to you is not the end game. Yeah. It's how you deal with it. Absolutely. Now, I've, I've been through all kind of man. We ain't got enough time to talk about the different things I've been through, but how you recover from it, that's and the main. You you mentioned something that stuck out though, because um, I was always wondering. Because you remember when we, when we went to uh, to Atlanta, right? Remember when we yeah. went to Atlanta and. Right. Uh, Bro, I was wondering how you knew them people that we that we linked up with. You yeah, know? right, right. So, so you already had that network in place, pretty yeah. much. Photography, man, opened so many doors. So I knew. So show out. Yeah, so show. We, we shot, and we were the first photo shoot in his studio. Like he had his new studio in Atlanta, whatever. I'm the first photo shoot in that studio. Because he came from 757, so they all moved out. You know, that's the number one hub. People moved to Atlanta, Charlotte to yeah. expand. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I knew him from photography, and photography has opened up. So I know you, I know you because of photography. Mm -hmm. We've been in the Air Force at the same time. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't know you. Right. But photography is like, damn it, like sports. You know what I mean? Like it's for, it's like I'm having conversations with people that I wouldn't know. Like the Air Force, I'm, it puts you in conversations with people you probably wouldn't have a conversation with. Yeah, typically. So as a result of, that's how I know them for, through photography. Yeah. Hey, that that was crazy too. Cause I don't know, were you in that conversation with uh? I don't, when we went to Atlanta, we was in that studio. It was a guy. He was from the seven five seven. And he was coming up with a, a TV show. It was like about some mermaids or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know I remember, yeah. I don't know if they, did they follow through with that? So they sent me the script for it. Mm. But uh, I had to deploy. So I ain't, I ain't get to oh. do it. Yeah. 
But when I think about that script now, bro, I laugh. Because I think about yeah. the whole premise of the whole shit. And I'm right. like, that shit would have been crazy. The, the basis, the foundation of it, 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 it seemed like that might have been something that was trendy. Yeah, at the time. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, staying power or something like that, how could you go seven seasons with that? You know, like, <laughs> what? You know, seven seasons of, I, I don't want to go into the whole, because I don't want to misquote what his, the basis of his show was, but seven seasons, I was like, come on, like, come on, man. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what it was. I'm gonna tell you what it was. Cause I told somebody else about it, about it, and she started laughing because she was like, How would you pull that off? So basically, it's 2021, so and we're very progressive. Right. So it was like surround, it was like it was a gay series. I don't know if you okay. knew that. Gay. Oh, G A Y. G A Y, yeah. Okay. So like the mer which I have no problem with. The the mer yeah, right. the mer we always I ain't got no problem. Yeah, I ain't got no problem. Yeah, we passed all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we passed. Yeah. So anyway, the uh, the main character, I, it was basically everybody was gay in the whole jump, the whole thing. So it was like, then I was gonna be in it, but it wasn't that I was gonna be a character that was like it had nothing to do. I I was just gonna be a a media personality. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not gonna lie to you. I kind of thought about how would that kind of how would that kind of like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like people be like, oh, yeah. you got to like, do a explaining after that. You got to do a whole lot of explaining, disclaimers and stuff like that. So I'm like, yeah, maybe maybe it was good that that didn't happen at that at that time because I I'm just starting doing whatever I want to do. Whatever people see me in first is what they're gonna associate me with. Right, right. So yeah. Anyway, that was crazy. Yeah. Exactly. And I've seen someone break that, like. Now, I just, again, I think about things and then I like my mind goes in different places. But my, my a friend of mine, O'Shea. Yeah. You know O'Shea? O'Shea the model? He, I've heard of him. I don't know him, though. I don't know him personally. Yeah, he did Love and Hip Hop. And um, I guess part of his script was to, you know, all the stuff was planned out. Or part of his script was to act like he was broke and ask his girl for some money or something like that. Yeah. And then for the longest time, people associated him with that. With being broke, I don't. He, surpassed, he broke through and just made that like he passed all that, and that was like, and he's escalated from that. But that's probably a rare occasion that you can break through that. You know, because again, people are going to so you're going to get typecast, and people are going to associate you with the the gay guy or the mm -hmm. whatever the role may have been, and that and that's you now. You can't do nothing else because everybody else. You can do you can sell a million records or. or Publish a million magazines. Well, yeah, this gay guy. And that's you know, what I was saying. So, yeah. But yeah, unless you extraordinary, like some sort of reinvent yourself, and that, that's my my partner reinvented himself. Like he was associated with the love and hip hop, something, something. And now he's reinventing himself into this super mega personality. Yeah. You know? So I don't recommend doing that. <laughs> doing what you what you, you know? Yeah. Type figuring out your path first. Yeah. You know, it's okay to turn stuff down. Yep. Yeah. Not, but not because of the content, but so you don't get typecast. You know, yeah. it's like start off with a slave movie. Like, you know, how all black people got to start off doing a slave movie or something like that. But anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. Now, yeah. How do you, how do you come up with the concepts though? Because I know you, you had, you make anything from somebody sitting in the bathtub eating pizza with, with wine on the side to laying in the, in the uh, desert naked, you make all you make all those look good, man. How how do you do that? How you come up with the concepts for those? Man, some of it, some of it is like daydreaming. I'm sitting at work, like, man, what if I'll have the local? So it's like building. So I'll have the so the platform is the desert. So right. I have. I'm like, okay, I got the desert. Like I, I know I want to. I'm doing. I know we're shooting in the desert today. Right. Or, or whatever that you know it could be planned for two weeks ahead. But I'm like, okay, on this day we're shooting in the desert. So I look at the desert, then I look at the model, then look at the desert, then look at the model, and then I say, okay, we it's already established. We're, she already looks how she looks. It's already established what I'm working with here. Yeah. Let's say Kendra Jackson for everybody know Kendra Jackson. Okay. For example, so Kendra Jackson, I was like, okay, she looks this way. This is her facial features. This is her, how she's built. This is how the desert. How can I mesh these two together? 
Right. And to not make the location overpower the overpower the model and not make the model overpower the location. Because you have this dope location, you don't want it to be just about the location. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want someone to, so basically, so I try to mesh those two together. So how can I make her one with nature? Got to find balance, yeah. You know, how can I make these people be one? So that's, that's like the, it's just like building blocks. So from there, so then like, so I'll think of certain poses in my head. So I have like five or 10 poses in my head for yeah. her to do. Then I also, I won't reinvent the wheel. I'll go look at, I'll give my sources up because I don't care. If they're looking at this, then they can get, something from this. So my source is, I'll go to like Model Mayhem. Mm -hmm. um, and Model Mayhem isn't as prominent as like Instagram because Instagram just blew everything out of the water. But Model Mayhem was this modeling site. You, you familiar with Model Mayhem? Yeah, I, I used, so back when we used to do the magazine a lot, a yeah. magazine, um, yeah. I, I would look at Model Mayhem sometimes. Yeah, I would go on Model Mayhem and it's kind of hard to navigate through because I can't just type in, you know, Instagram, you can hash, you can type it, you can look at a hashtag and go through whatever you're trying to find. Mm -hmm. Well, Bottle Mayhem is not as easy, so you have to find a picture kind of like what you want. Yeah. So I browse through Model Mayhem and I'll find like a desert shoot. And then I'll click on that. And then from that picture, it might have a list of 50 other, you know, the blue list that will be like nature nature photo shoots, models in nature. So I'll click on these different lists on Model Mayhem and then look through it and see, okay, is there something better than what I'm thinking in my mind? Right. So I'll have my own poses, then I'll have something that they might have did and, I'm, and then I'll send the model like, hey, we can do this, but put our own spin to it. So I don't reinvent the wheel. Right. Because you, you can't think that you're the first person to do something. Because when I first started photography, I'm going I'm, to I'm round it up, wrap it up. But when I first started photography, I thought that everything I did, that I was the first one to do it. Mm -hmm. But social media wasn't as a giant as it was. So I would do stuff like, oh, man, you know what? It'd be dope if I had a model with some caution tape. So I have a model wrapped all whole bunch of, bunch of caution tape. And then when social media, like once I start, saw everything else, like Instagram, and then I saw, okay, well, I'm not, I didn't invent this caution tape. There's thousands of people that's already done caution tape photo shoots. So you can't, you don't, you can't think that you created something. Of course, yeah. there's something might have dreamed of and nobody can I, this something like this came through my dream i know this ain't for you yeah but a lot of times if i get creative block then i'll go look for other ideas and mesh my ideas and put it together and send it to the model and i'll say like put a heart on everything that you like and if whatever we match up with then we shoot whatever she hearted okay so basically that's my process looking at the model looking at the scenery, are we shooting backdrop today? Are we shooting location today? Um, how do I want to see you out there? Yeah. How, how do I want to see you? How does the world want to see you? Right. Because I look at it like, okay, well, I want you posed like this, but the viewer will probably want to see this particular pose. Yeah. So it's like, we cater to the viewer, do we do our own thing? Sometimes I'll do the, do my own thing or we'll do our own thing. And sometimes we'll cater to the viewer might want to see this. Okay, we need them likes up. We need them likes up and them shares up and them follows up. So that's, we're going to put, we're going to put this out right now. Yeah. Okay, now we've built this up. Now we can kind of do more creative stuff and show like versatility. Yeah. So, well, one thing I see, I notice is, um, and when I think about how you, because I'm, as an artistic person, right? Yeah. You are able to capture the art using the human body for sure and so you kind of tiptoe the line because you know in american culture we're not as progressive when it comes to certain certain things like you yeah. have some photography on you you know that you've taken where some people could look at it and be like oh my god like you you got her showing this and that right because you know when you go overseas they don't really give a shit about that like they that, that's pg to them or probably right. that's pg to them but here we it's TVMA over here, you know what I mean? Right, so, right, right. So, uh, so basically, like, what gives you the, I guess you could say the vision or the, the fuck it to just go ahead and do that? Well, I've been like, reported enough. Like, again, I'm on, a, on suspension right now. Yeah. So reported enough to kind of know what I can get away with and what I can't get away with. Okay. So as far as censorship goes, 
I'm like, listen, man, uh, not because I sat there and read the, you know, you, can, you click accept. What are you going to do? Not accept? You got to click accept for all these different, when they come out with these different rules or whatever. So I never read the rules, but I know the rules from getting reported. Right. And so I'll know, okay, I've censored stuff, but not censored it enough. So I was like, okay, well, this is the level of how I have to censor nipple or, or but I never shoot straight up porn anyway, so to speak. So even if I have someone completely naked, yeah. This is going to be, you know, her arm might be her bra. Right. Or, you know, of course, there's some instances where you might have slipped. Or I might, they might do this and it's still be nipple coming through this. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, I'll try to, you know, and I'll, say, and I'll say to them, even if you cover up, don't look at, don't cover up as if, oh my God, I'm naked. Mm -hmm. Cover up, you know, play it off. Right. Use your arms as your, uh, as your bra. Use your leg as your underwear. Right. You know, that way it doesn't look like, oh my God, you know, like you just like you, uh, someone bust in while you're in the shower, you know, don't cover up like that. So even if you cover up, make it, um, make it sexy. There you make go. It on purpose, make it look like you don't give a damn. Like, yeah, hey, hey. It, it comes across, I'm telling you, it looks artistic. You know, they look comfortable, which makes a viewer comfortable. Well, it's a snowball effect because people want to shoot what they see. Mm-hmm. So if I do one of those and then someone someone might be looking at it thinking, damn, I want to do a shoot like that. Let me go to him. Right. Because the way he shoots it, it's not porn. Right. So I get into that like, hey, my, I only want, I get the messages like I only want to do this particular shoot with you. Or, or this photographer has been hitting me up to do this, but I, I'd rather do this with you. Right. So And then it's also vibes because I, I, people say all the time, like, you know, I feel comfortable working with you. Um, it's because I'm not, again, it goes back to the, I've always been around this particular thing. So it ain't like um, some old, so usually you have like, no disrespect, but you'll have some old photographer, uh, larger dude, whatever, maybe not the best, most appealing guy or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they might not be used to shooting with certain people. So they lose their mind and lose their composure and, and, and say something inappropriate. Yeah. Versus like, this ain't nothing new to me. I had the, whoever the chick, dope chick was in high school with the modeling, you know, humbly speaking, I'm just so, so the end result is the most important thing to me. Right. Can, I can still see, mm -hmm. I can see, I, I can see that the model is incredible. Um, feature wise, every, I can, I can still see, yeah. But at the end of the day, the end result is where I'm because after I'm after we all leave this planet, yeah, my work's still gonna be here. Somebody gonna have my when I go, somebody gonna put my picture as their default something that I've worked on as their default picture. Yeah. You know what I mean? when I'm gone. So that's already that's cement. You know what I mean? So I can't, you know, I didn't, I'm not in the NBA, so I'm not gonna be in the NBA Hall of Fame, I'm not gonna be in the NFL Hall of Fame. But yeah. when I my pictures are still gonna be here. Because, and then I'm, I'm transiting, I'm hitting every generation. Yeah. I'm my age group. I'm shooting the new, like, it, it's like, uh, I'm shooting people in my daughter's age group, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, Bruh. I'm here. That's why, that's why I'm, I honestly feel like, so purpose to me is a real thing, right? And then the circles that we end up in, like you mentioned before, like how you and I met and how we meet other people. I feel like it's all kind of like destiny in a way because we're all wired a certain way. Because right. the reason I do stuff, like everything I do, that's the reason why I said that's why I write poetry, that's why I write books. Everything, all my intellectual property is me understanding that it's gonna transcend my existence here. So once I'm gone, that's cool because whatever I created is still gonna outlive me. And I see that's how you think too. Like you're like, hey, I'm doing photography because when I'm gone, my work, my intellectual property is still gonna be here. So I think that's I think that's super dope. Legacy. Legacy. That's what it's all about. Like, you know, yeah. sometimes and that and I think about this as I'm shooting. You yeah. know, sometimes I do like little, you know, white backdrop, booty shot, whatever, you know, call it a day. Yeah. But for the most part, if it's something, if it's a project. So it's two types of things. You have photo shoots where the models say, hey, this is what I want to shoot. Mm -hmm. And you shoot what they want to shoot. Then you then I'll sometimes I'll have my projects. Yeah. Like, hey, 
this is what I want to do. My projects are usually things to where 15, 20 years from now, I can look at it and be like, man, I did that. I have pictures now where I'm like, I, me? Yeah, I did that. That's I've been doing this since 07, but I still have pictures where I'm like, man, I cannot believe I did that. You And you also, on the flip side, you have your look back at stuff and be like, damn, I, I thought I was at a certain level. I really needed to step my game up. Yeah. But for the most, but most of the time I look back, I'm like, I can, I can see where I turned the corner. Yeah. You can see I can it. look right, right around the time, probably, probably about a year mm -hmm. before I started like submitting to your magazine, like the, um, probably about a year before the gold series and all that is when I started get like probably 2012 is when I personally started like, okay, I'm here. Or I look at certain photographers, like there's always someone better. Mm -hmm. So I look at certain photographers and I'm like, okay, you're here, but I see how to get there. Right. So uh, you might see a writer and you're like, damn, this motherfucker wrote the hell out of that article. Yeah. But I see what you, I'm on your head. Yeah. Not, I'm, I'm competitive. Yeah. Like that, bro. yeah <laughs> not, not on no uh, malicious competition. No, not at all. I look at, I look at certain photographers. It'll also be like, I'll, I'll, I may be like, I'm better than a person. I know that I'm better than a certain photographer. Yeah. But he might shoot a certain model better than I shot him. Mm -hmm. It's like that. So it's like, damn, he can't touch me. He just he's a baby in this. He's been, you know, he's been shooting six months. I've been shooting 13 years. But he shot that model way better than I would have shot him. Yeah. Because it be like that sometimes. Yeah. So, it's the same, it's the same mentality. I carry the same mentality as I did when I played basketball. It's yeah. It's just the competitive thing. Whatever I'm right. doing, it's not, like you said, it's not malicious competition. I yeah. just have to walk into the room feeling like I'm the best of whatever my my uh, exactly. my craft is. Now, real, I guess realistically, I hate the word realistically, but realistically, this guy might be better than me. He might write yeah. better than me. He might, But guess what? I'm going to work on my craft. I'm going to look at what he's doing, and I'm going to be on them hills. Right. Be on his head. It's going to make me better. You know what I mean? Right. So, um. So I've seen you in action. I've seen you, you know, um, in a session, the one when we was in Atlanta, you know. Yeah. And I saw how you kind of directed the the model, that that um, relationship with you and the model, mm. right? And you said before, you know, when you were cutting hair, before you really started, you were very introverted and you're still introverted. Yeah. So for anybody that is a photographer now, how did you come out of, how did you come out of your shell and how important is it to have that relationship to be able to direct the model? It was, uh, well, man, uh, I think I referenced three points, significant points where the shift was with those things. I, um, so I was like a, an apprentice. So I, I, I didn't mind reaching out. That's one reason why I got to a certain level. I reach out to, I have no ego, still don't have no ego. Mm -hmm. I, I know who I am, but I don't have no ego. Right. So, I would reach out to these different photographers that's already the tools who, it was like, now everybody's a photographer, right? Mm -hmm. at, the, at the time where I got into it, it might've been about 10 photographers in 757 that was worth mentioning. Now there's probably 50 in the 757 that's worth mentioning. So uh, do the cameras get more available? But anyway, to get to your point was I had a, I was an apprentice for this photographer because I'm asking him questions. And I'm, I'm accompanying him on shoots. And the way that he's directing these models, I saw what he was saying and what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And the main thing was, it wasn't more so about pose like this, pose like that. He was making them laugh. Whatever they might have been feeling, they might have been nervous or shy themselves. And whatever, when he made them laugh, they became comfortable. And now he can get, now we can get past all, now pose like this, do like this. You know, so, so making them feel comfortable. I might have to become a comedian for five, four hours. Yeah. So um, that's one thing. So that's one aspect where I remember like there's a shift. And then I, probably about four years later, I'm on a shoot and I feel now I'm starting to smell myself, like humbly speaking. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm here now. And, um, but I had this photographer come in and use my studio and I'm like, you know, I kind of like what the other guy, like, yeah, go and shoot. And, um, when he shot this model, I shot her and then he shot her. Mm -hmm. He had her kiki and all over the floor and all over the place. Oh my God. I love these pictures. So baby, he out, I got outshot in my own you, studio. 
Hey, he was Kevin Hart out there, John. Huh? He, 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 he <laughs> killed. He killed me at like a we like a site like a rap battle, and he he killed. Yeah. I, know I was competing with him, but he came to my studio and outshot me in my studio, and had the model all, ha, 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 all, all over the place. You like that? And I'm kind of like, you, you know, know, like the jokes, man. So what it was, and I so again, I was like, okay, technically, technically, he doesn't understand ISO, shutter speed, and aperture value better than me. The three principles of photography, he don't understand that better than me. But what he did was, he had a connection with this model. Mm -hmm. So by him developing this connection with this model, then he was able to outshoot me, even though I was more technically sound than him. Yeah. So I was, so then I was like, I can't just be a a glass and plastic in a, in a backdrop, I have to be a, shooting with me has to be an experience. Right. So when you work with me, you're going to get the whole, you're going to get the photo shoot, you're going to get the experience, the vibe, the talk. We, we're not just shooting, we're talking, have a conversation, you know, like, you know, we have a therapy session. Mm -hmm. So when we shoot with me, it ain't just pictures, it's a therapy session. Because yes. people come to me like, what people think is models have like these models. Oh, I wish I was them. Uh, they have this amazing life. They're born gifted. That, but a lot of times these models have like sometimes these models are doing photo shoots because they have low self esteem. Right. More more than people would know. It's like they shoot it because they were they were ugly in school, or people called them ugly, or or they just broke up out of their relationship, or it'd be reasons like that. Like why are we doing this shoot? So it's, you know, it's, basically, it's basically therapy for them at the therapy, end. Therapy, therapy. Make my boyfriend, make my ex jealous. Uh, I lost a lot of weight. I've been hitting the gym. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. And I want some pictures to kind of show, document this point in my life. So I realize it's more than a photo shoot. And you're more uh, than a photographer? Yeah, more than a photographer is like healing. So I was like, okay, I'm providing. So some people, so especially in the early point of my, before I got, good so to speak i know that i'm good mm -hmm. i know that i'm great mm -hmm. but before i got good people may have been working with me because of me mm -hmm. i mean so okay you're working with me because of based off of my facebook because i ain't even good yet yeah. so you work with me because of me so let me give you let me give you this yeah now they're working with me because of me and because of my work mm -hmm. so it's like any business, honestly, because I tell people all the time when people are, um, when they come to your business, they're buying you. Right. They're buying you, but they also, and then they'll buy your product, right? Cause, or service. So sure. it's important for you to sell you and then whatever else you got going on, that's what they're going to ride with. Exactly. Because you'll have like, I, I think for, I always think about other people. I have this uh, realtor friend, you might know her, Claudine. I'm shouting all these different names. These people in my, in my circle. And she may be the best realtor in the world. Right. But she's the best person. She's the best personality. Mm -hmm. Now what's trending is like this guy, uh, we, where the money reside. Where you seen that? What is we it? Go, where the money reside. I mean, you got to look at it after. I'm going to send you a link. But fine. <laughs> right. But this car salesman, like one of, those, one of those, not a huge dealership salesman, like one of those car salesmen with the, you know, 90% interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, eight thousand down on an eighty-two. Those type, it was that type of fellowship. But his personality, he was like, in twenty twenty-one, we're going where the money reside. Where the money reside. And he got this whole song, and went viral from this song. So people are going to go to him to his dealership to buy his car because of his personality, not his knowledge on selling cars. Right. You know. Yeah. So that's what I want. I, but I want to get people both come to me because of my knowledge of photography and because it's an experience. Yeah. And that's perfect. Cause um, like I said, I want to, I want people to understand how the whole photography business relationship happens. Cause it's not just a magical thing where you just come to the show up to the photo shoot, the model comes and you just take pictures. It don't, it don't work like that. Uh, uh, there's a discussion. So with me, uh, what I began to do, what, so I, I just, you learn as you go. So what yeah. I learned, I, it, there has been a, it was like that. It would be like, okay, I got a photo shoot. Like, actually, I have a photo shoot at 5 p.m. Wave, I got plenty of time. Today, I have a photo shoot at 5 p.m. today. In the past, it would be, I have a photo shoot at 5 p.m., they show up, and then we start shooting. Yeah. 
I learned that that's not the way to go. It, I learned that, okay, you have a photo shoot at 5 p.m. on the 10th. We're going to have a discussion throughout the week. Right. Like, okay, what did you decide on what you're wearing? Okay, what, what's your first look going to be? Okay, send me a picture on a, you know, throw, throw the outfit on the bed so, so I can see what colors you have, so I can know what kind of backdrop to put up. Um, is everything going good? You still, we still feeling good for the shoot? Do you want to reschedule? Like, it's an interaction throughout the week. Mm -hmm. Because if we're not having that interaction throughout the week, we show up and it's kind of like awkwardness. Right. It's silence. So, nobody want to talk. Yeah, yeah, we don't. Awkwardness is kind of like, okay, is this good? So we've, so we've already had kind of, we've already been talking a week, two weeks straight. Right. So exchange ideas. So now it's like two friends about to do some work together. Mm -hmm. So that it's just establishing a, like, you know, following, not, not a, establishing a report. Establishing a rapport yeah. prior to. Right. And that's and that's crucial if, if the person has time to. You probably can apply it to your own thing. You know, like you got an interview or, or um, I don't know if interview would probably be the best thing because you need them to bring every, because you talk about certain things and then you, no, save that for the interview. Well, I'm going to tell you, well, I'm going to tell you where I learned how to do that. So it was probably around the time that I did the, when, when I, as you come with me to do that interview with John Carlos. Yes. Because the weird thing is, I, because, so first of all, people ask me how I get interviews like that. I just yeah. have a lot of fuck it in my system. I just reach out to whoever I feel like I want to talk to. And if they yeah. reply, they reply. If they don't, they don't. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, I sent him a message. He called me, like, probably the next day. And we had a long conversation on the phone. Right. And so the whole conversation, I'm thinking, like, it sounds kind of like interview information, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But right. at the same time, I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe this is good because now we're not just going to be there just talking back and forth. Right. Now we developed some type of a relationship beforehand. Right. Which, exactly. I felt like, yeah, it clicked. I was like, yo, this it's important. When we got here, I was more, I was more comfortable. Right. I, I know I was more comfortable with him talking to him because I'm like, yo, we already had a conversation. We kind of feel like we know each other a little bit. Part two. It's part two versus yeah. The ice it's already happened. Exactly. Well, I talked about Nori. Yeah. I watched champs. Like, I love drink champs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> talked about Nori because it's like the reason he's able to get these client guests on his show because he know these people. Yeah. You know, even though he cuts them off every time they, you know, they, but because they're having you already know him from Queensbridge or you or you was in your you know you you know for real because you're the put him on your beats first or what, you know, mm -hmm. these different relationships and they come back full circle. Yep. So, but yeah, that, man. That's, that's, hey, that's how a lot of, it's all about relationships, man. Honestly. For sure. Um, so I wanted to ask you too, like you've taken a lot of pictures I know over the years. So I, this might be kind of hard, but what has been your favorite picture that you've taken? Well, I can't do one, man. Okay, so you may, you may be able to remember these pictures, but if not, you'll probably go. I'll probably send them to you or something like that. All right. Um, hey, it's just ain't no quick answer. Each one got an explanation to it. Um, in no particular order. For for the for the models and the listeners, no particular order. Really, no particular order. But one of the, that sticks out of my mind is this uh, model, Curls I Do Adore. Can't think of a real name on the top of my head. I no disrespect, but you know I know who you are, Curls I Do Adore because I remember people's social media names. Um, there's this picture where her flipping her hair up on a great backdrop. She has on a purple dashiki, a yellow dashiki, and a green dashiki. It's not really those colors. I changed those colors. One of them is real, and I don't know which one is the original, but I changed two of them to be different colors. But she's flipping her hair, and it's showing the stages. So, like, she's here, mm -hmm. and here, and here. Three different pictures flipping her hair and um, that one really sticks out of my mind because it's like the, the hair. This is before, you know, now it's the weave era and the straight hair and the, mm -hmm. well, it's kind of a mixture of both. Now it's the natural hair era and it's the still the weave era at the same time. Yeah. But the fact that she had her natural hair, Afri a free form Afro doing this, it was very important to me because it's like, I can put this on my wall, going back to the legacy, I can put this on my wall and have and my daughter can be proud to look at it. Yeah. So that sticks out. The, uh, another one that sticks out. Yeah, this one gonna be kind of long winded too. I hope you ain't got nothing to do. Nah, you good, bro. I'm here. And another one that sticks out. Um, the Native American photo. 
that we did with our friend. Oh yeah, I love that picture. So now the reason why I'm long-winded about this because when I did it, I um, I just thought it was an inc incredible photo. She's you know she's uh, mentioned that her grandmother was Native American, and just the whole elements of what we had to go through was it was cold, it was super cold that day, snowing. So we're doing an implied nude in the snow with just a Native American headrest on. Yeah. And the picture was so innocent because she's not posing. She's not looking at the camera. She's just like in nature doing something. Like yeah. she's in nature, like looking, holding on to a, a, a tree or something like that, but not connecting with the camera. So it was kind of like we peeked in on her. Right. That was one shot. That was one shot? One shot. You one know, take. I'm so not, I did. I sound surprised, but knowing her, I'm not super surprised. Yeah. She go in front of the camera. One shot. Now we did that. Put it this way, it was the first shot. We did other shots. Mm -hmm. That was the very first shot. And then I took some others, and I took some others. And I took. We probably did like ten total because it was yes. cold, and she's completely nude, in the snow. So we took like ten shots total, but that was the first shot. Okay, come on, we got, it, we got, it, we got it. Bro, I'm gonna, was, you, I'm gonna tell you, I thought that was edited like that. One take, Jake. That's crazy. One take, Jake, and um. But it's bittersweet because I got so much flack years later. Not that the first time, put it out, boom, it's the best thing I ever did. Everybody loved it, went up. My my, yeah. my stock went up. It developed the relationship with her and I are working together on a consistent mm -hmm. basis. But about a year and a half, no, about four years later, I reposted it. Mm-hmm. Four difference of four years. This is how important. A difference of probably four years later. I'm not getting the same reception. I'm like, why am I not? So I'm now I'm getting like, she's not Native American. Blah blah blah. You're disrespecting the the headrest. I'm like, man, what makes you say that she's not Native American? Right. Because she's not pale skinned. Right. Because actually, that's what Native American describe you as, pale one. Yeah. Well, so, so and so I had to go into, I had to educate on that particular post, and say, you know, having pale, like, you can be a, a dark skinned Native American. Her grandmother is Native American. She got the blessing to do it. She this wasn't we don't this wasn't a Halloween shoot. Right. <laughs> this really meant meant something to us. But so it was bittersweet. So that's still one of my favorite pictures. But I got so much flack from it because because she wasn't white, then they said that she couldn't possibly be Native American. So, but it's, visually, that's one of my favorite pictures. It's, it's super dope. We had two. Yeah. So the pumpkin. I remember mm -hmm. that one. Or the pumpkin Halloween photo. Because that was special to me. Because that was another. That wasn't something I ever seen. I've seen it all over the place now. Mm -hmm. But at that particular time, I had not seen it. Yeah. It was. It was something where I borrowed the idea and like, oh, I could do that. This was a brainchild. So I was like, so I went and got a pumpkin, and I and I approached several people. So I, now she doesn't even notice. I approached several people about this. Um, Fallon is her name. I approached seven people, pr several, not seven, several people prior to Fallon. Not because I preferred to shoot other people. It was just like whatever came to my mind first. Yeah. So I was like, you know, oh, I'm going to do this and I'll, I'll do it with first person that came to mind. Mm -hmm. And some people, when you give them ideas, they kind of slow motion with it. So Because you, you, you know the response. Like, say you ask someone for an interview and they're like, yeah, uh, let me know. Yeah. Like, no, I just asked you, do you want to do an interview? And your response is, let me know. Right. No. I just let you know. <laughs> like, or, or whatever it is. Like, yeah, hey, I'm trying to go to the, you trying to go to, uh, to the, to the, to the Nationals game? Yeah, let me know. Yeah. No, I'm telling. <laughs> tell you right so, now. I'm letting you know right, right now. So I would, I would reach out to people and be like, hey, I'm trying to do this pumpkin thing. You're going to have a pumpkin. On. You can know the type of responses you're getting. It's kind of like, I'm at the point now where I don't get, really get blown off. Yeah. But it'd be. So like the response didn't have the same energy to it. Yeah. She had the right energy to the response. Like, oh yeah, shit, let's go. Right. So shit, go get this pumpkin. What's the uh, farm fresh? Mm -hmm. 
go to because all the grocery stores are different across the country. So farm fresh, does that still exist? Nope. Every, <laughs> farm fresh is gone. Back to that farm. I love farm fresh. Yeah, that chicken, the chicken is yeah, but yeah. Chicken. Man, but then so I go to farm fresh, good old farm fresh. They had the wood floors. And I'm like, man, this feel, it was the target of you have Walmart and you have Target. That was the target of grocery stores. Yeah. But anyway, so farm fresh. I go there, I get me a pumpkin. Um, I knew how I, I knew I wanted the pumpkin to look like Jack, what's to do? The Nightmare Before Christmas looking, uh, can't think of the guy. Yeah. But the pumpkin is, is based off of the Nightmare Before Christmas type of design. I think his name is Jack something. Um, anyway, the guy, the Pirates of the Caribbean director, and the, that guy, he draws these skinny, Anyway, people are knowing. Yeah. And I'm, there might be another something else I could send you where you can post it up like this. this what we're trying to get. Yeah. Um, but anyway, but I couldn't carve it like that. I'm not a carver. Right. But I did. So I had my then girlfriend carve it up. And uh, she carved it just like how I, just how it was, you know, drawn on the thing. She carved it up. Uh -huh. Or she drew it, the jack o' lantern face on there, and then carved it through that. And put some thread in there so the thread was sewn. Them. So it wasn't just she had the thread sewn in the mouth clothes. That's crazy. It was just the right size to put it on the model's head. Yeah. And that's crazy how that worked out though. Like man, how the pumpkin just fit the model's head. Though. Yeah. And when she put it on, like we just test I got behind the scenes of that too. When she put it on, it was like, man, this is going to be crazy. But I have to light it a certain way. Uh -huh. I had to, had, to, had to have a certain type of darkness, a certain type of spookiness. And I don't like horror movies, and well, I do like horror movies, but I don't like all that spooky and evil and all that. But I'm like, but I, but I know what would scare me. Yeah. So I'm gonna put it like that, and I'm gonna make it look like that. So I had to light it a certain way and do this and do that, and it was like cool, man. And it's like that's another one where. Every Halloween, like I got a Christmas album now. Yeah, I noticed so I Halloween. I noticed every Halloween you do post that picture. I post it rather, you know, because I, I have new followers yeah, every year, additional couple thousand new followers. I'm like, they maybe they haven't scrolled that far, so I post it up. And plus, I want to post it anyway. Um, so one, two, three. Uh -huh. You only asked for one, but I, I had to give you my my top. Three and then there's some other ones now where I'm starting to get like I'm far, I've fallen in love with certain photos now like the silver body paint that I did the gold body paints which which I, how I learned those yeah. the gold body paint ones too yo yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had it the whole time whole time man that's one of my favorites too that's Fallon by the way for those who don't know yeah that's the same girl that was in the pumpkin oh I yeah. didn't know for sure I didn't know that. Yeah. How do you get yeah. the product shirt for one? So the shirt, uh, I'm going to, I was, actually, this shit, this shit fell right in line. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So I have another one up here. Um, when I do my virtual shop. Oh, man. My virtual man. shop, I was going to. Hold put on, put that back on the screen, man. I got, I'm going to screen that. That's crazy. Yeah. That's. Man. So when I do my virtual shop, I was going to have this because as like a one-of-one -one type situation. Right. But however we want to work it, like if people want them, I can make them. You know what I mean? But okay. it's just it just worked out perfectly that I could wear it while I'm talking to you. Yeah. See it and see your work. And That's uh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. So um, if they want to get it, they could just holler at me, man, you know. I, okay. I, I, I'll put it on the website soon. Um, Let's talk about mental health for a second because, you know, two okay. black men. I know I tell people all the time, it's really, it's kind of an art form having to be a black man in the military, mm. given everything that we have to go through already, plus being in the military. And so, having to press it. Yeah. So yeah. mental health wise, how are you doing? Actually, man, this is, this is going to be a five point answer. There's no black and white answers with me. Cause it's no, that's cool. So recently... Um, I ju you're still currently serving, so it don't apply, but it will apply to you. I mean, it does apply. It all, it's all. I just received um, disability mm -hmm. 
I was already I was already getting disability, but I just got an increase, and um, for PTSD. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be one million percent transparent about this. There's a lot of people that go around faking and, and pretending and trying to do this to get like to get this disability. So I have real things that I've seen, and without you know opsec, I still know I'm still. Even though I'm not in the Air Force anymore, I still know like, you know, OPSEC and, and um, security and whatever. But basically, to make a long story short, I used to prepare these uh, security briefings. That's, I had to put these videos together of different strikes that they would do overseas. So I would see these different attacks. Um, so basically, I'm seeing these, I'm preparing these slides for the commander to do his, his little meetings or whatever. And I'm seeing these, uh, these strikes on, I'm not gonna go too far into it because it's still, you know, there's still uh, a sensitive matter right? for, for social media. But basically um, seeing these different airstrikes, seeing the result of these different airstrikes and not being able to mention them or say anything to anyone about it. So, and I had to do this. So I, I don't know, like actually right around the time we met, probably I had to deploy. I don't know if it was, I was getting back from the deployment or if I deployed when we met each other. I think you were, you might've got back. I was getting back. I was getting back. Yeah. So yeah. Cause we met each other in 2016. Probably 16, 15, 16. Yeah. So I got back from deployment in 2015. But while I was deployed in 2015, I mean, we knew of each other, but we met officially in 2016. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so basically not being able to talk about, because in the military, you can't really talk about certain things. You can't get better now. But before you couldn't because you're concerned about losing your security clearance or you're concerned about them putting you in some nutty bin or um, or different things affecting your career. So you don't want to say that you're mentally affected by something because you don't know if it's going to, you know, everything is boards. Like, is this going to mess me up on the board? Is this, is this going to mess me up with my, my uh, EPR? Yeah. Is it going to mess me up? So you want to always be like, you know, I'm on up and up. No, everything's good. Yeah. Everything's yeah. good. Now I'm good. How was your weekend? Good. Yeah. How you doing? You know good. how Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because you don't want to say, man, my dog died, uh, my, you know, my mom got some sort of illness, or you know, you don't want to go into all these things because being a man, you want to be considered as strong. You know, like not, nah, and I'm don't nothing phase me. I'm a G. I'm right. tough. You don't want to be weak as a man. Mm -hmm. And then you know, like you said, the different factors. You know, being a black man, being a black man in the military, so you can't really say certain things. Uh, because for me, the number, so I, again, man, I don't want to keep harping on this, but for me, it was always the number one thing is, is race relations. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, when I would see certain things happen, like with the Ferguson, I remember being, I'm gonna say it now because I'm, I can say it now. I was, um, in the security briefing mm -hmm. and, um, at the time, there was some stuff going on in Ferguson. You remember with the Mike Brown, with the whatever lemonade tea that he, uh, cigarellos, whatever he took out of the store, whatever he did in the store, and got killed, and he was laying out in the street. And now the Ferguson protest happens. So one of the guys in this briefings, you've been to these briefings, commanders, like different briefings. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the guys in the briefing was like, man, can we send one of these bombs over there to Ferguson? Oh, shit. Yeah. See? I'm in Qatar. This is 2014 or 15. Can we send one? Of, it was 2014. Can we send one of these bombs over here to Ferguson? And I got to sit there in this meeting because I'm military too. And I got to sit there like. And not say nothing. And not say nothing because, or I can say something and get some repercussions. Right. Or because these are higher ranking officials. Right. So I'm in this colonel's. Nothing less than a master sergeant, other than me up in there. Nothing less than a master sergeant. I'm only there because I'm preparing the briefing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, these guys don't give a damn. 
It's like, they don't give a damn about us, but I got to sit here because he outranks me by five ranks. Right. How do we deal with it? Let's talk about solutions. Yeah. So how I, how I deal with mental issues, um, that's a bad term, mental issues. I don't have no mental issues, but how I have, you know, things that I go through. How I deal with them mm -hmm. is my work, mm -hmm. you know, like my photography. Um, that's a way to escape from, from life. You know, I'm able to create, I control this world. You know, right. that world, oh, that life, I can't control what's happening on Capitol Hill. I yeah. can't control racism in the military. But what I can control is how this picture is going to come out. Right. So I deal with it. So basically, but for others, people, everybody don't have photography, but how other people can deal with it is whatever your, whatever you do outside of your nine to five, mm -hmm. you know, because there's some people, it's a blessing to have something else that you have, you're passionate about because some people just have a nine to five and then they go home, get something to eat, go to sleep, nine to five, go home, get something to eat, get, repeat, wash and repeat, rinse and repeat. Groundhog day. We have some to where we do our nine to five, then we come home and put, damn near that same amount of time or more into our craft and it gives us an outlet yeah so what i would say to other people is find something that you love you know what i mean and then there's recreational games like video games and things like that but find something that you're passionate about something what do you love whether it's giving back whether it's uh i didn't find what i loved until 28. You know what I mean? So people think, well, what am I going to do? You don't have to necessarily have to know what you want to do in your life at 18, 19, 20. I didn't know what I want. I, I was in the Air Force. So I already had a job already. So I, I had my, you know, uh, security. Right. But I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I was a, a barber five years into my Air Force career. And I thought that that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I did. I really loved it. Mm -hmm. But the one thing about barbering was, I know I'm all of, I do have a point with this. But one thing about barbering was this affects my community. What I do, I love it and it affects my community. Right. With photography, I do it and I love it and it can stretch. Somebody in Afghanistan, somebody in Russia probably was on my page today. Right. You know, and they, and probably save, I look at my insights and, I'm, it's, you know, I got, X amount of saves on my work. And it's like, man, who was say who was out here saving my work? But if I'm barbering in my neighborhood, you know, I affect this kid in my neighborhood's life, which is great. But where does it go past that? Mm -hmm. So this is something global. So find something that you do that can either affect locally or something that is that can transcend transcend globally. Something that, basically something that you can be passionate about and that will take your mind off certain things. Right. Because you can't just go to work and die. Right. Is there a specific or a certain way that somebody should go about creating their business as a photographer? Like, because mm. people people love to talk about LLCs and all that stuff. I have my own thoughts okay. about that, but that's the topic of the LLC. Man, people like <laughs> I always reference memes, man. I'm sorry, there's a meme like. I my my nine I was gonna get my nine month old some Jordans, but he told me now nah, get your LLC yeah. instead. Bruh. Your nine month old said what? <laughs> like, right. First of all, this LLC man, it's fifty dollars. I don't know what it is now, but when I first got mine in yeah. two thousand seven, it was like forty dollars or something like that. So they're acting like this LLC. If you buy Jordans, you can't get an LLC. If you buy a TV, you can't get an LLC. If you buy, listen, man. You can walk and chew gum at the same time. Not one or the other. Right. You can do both. So, but as far as the business aspect of it, I would say get your ducks in the row. I'm thinking as if I could do everything all over again, even though I wouldn't change a thing. But if I was guiding someone else, I would say the technical aspect of it, the LLCs and all that. Yeah, that's fine and dandy. First, perfect your craft. Mm -hmm. Perfect your craft. I'm not saying going out because there's this legal aspect, the limited liability. So there are at least legal aspects of the LLC. It's not just something to a tax thing, or is it, is it, it is a thing. Mm -hmm. But the number one thing is perfect your craft. Perfect your craft. 
while you're I mean, go get your LLC and all that too. But I would say don't go operating on people. Don't think because you got this LLC now I can go out here performing and doing all these acts before you perfect your craft. Right. I practice. So people ask me all the time. We in reference to business. Um, there's a couple people ask me like, hey, what, what should I charge? Mm -hmm. some, some people that have started day one, day seven, day day two months in. Hey, what should I charge? I'm like, man, nothing. Don't charge nothing. The money will come. So I'm like, back to the barbering thing. Um, DeAndre Gaten, shout out DeAndre Gaten if you ever see this. Um, I was a brand new barber, just completed barber school. I'm in the shop. Dre got him lined up out the door. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey, man, I got you. you want nah, I'm waiting for Dre. Hey, man, you, I'm free. Nah, I'm waiting for Dre. Yeah. So I'm like, they just don't know. So Dre was like, listen, you're not cutting enough free heads. It was something to that effect. He was like, you're not doing enough, you're not doing enough free haircuts. Mm -hmm. When he said that, you, you I'm not doing enough free haircuts. Yeah. Cut the hairs for free. If you blaze it, they're gonna be back. Mm -hmm. So to anyone that's like, like, so there's people like, well, what should I charge and different things like that, man? Do some free photo shoots. I still do free photo shoots. I don't have to, yeah. but, I, but I might shoot such and such for free because she's going to be back. Right. And when she come back, now I can name my price. Right. I mean, so that's one aspect. So LLC, yes, get your LLC, but don't get your LLC and think you can take off running with any business. Like, oh, now I got my LLC. Now I can start tattooing somebody on the side of my... No, man. Yeah. You know, you still want to be safe. So per perfect your craft, understand, do research. You know what I mean? As far that's the number, that's the number one dismissive thing to say. People are like, well, do your research. Yeah. But do research. I've watched to this day. I still, I don't have as much time as I used to. But I watched hours upon hours. So once my mentor couldn't get me to, he was able to get me to a certain point. Mm -hmm. You have mentors or different people you look up to and they can only get you to a certain point. Mm -hmm. Because depending on your fire, you know, you might be, they can, they, they're here and then you, they can teach you something and now you're here and you're satisfied with that. Right. But you might want to go here, but their knowledge level might be, you know, they might have extensive knowledge level, but certain questions I got to where I, I asked him, he can't answer these questions anymore. Yeah. Hey, how you do this? Man, I don't know. But when you're first starting, he can answer every question like a kid. Right. You know, Mom, how I do this, dad, how I do this? Oh, X, Y, and Z. Up until, up until about seventh, eighth grade. How do I do this homework? To, up until about ninth, tenth grade. After that, you can't help me no more. Right. Now I go to this level. So I learned everything that I can learn from my mentor once I got to the point that he couldn't help me, no disrespect to him, but my fire was so crazy. You can't, you, you can't answer every question I got. Mm -hmm. So I got to this point and thankfully he got me to this point. Now I'm jump, jumping on the YouTube. So I have YouTube thousands. I, I, want, I don't know if that, it, I wish I knew the number amount. I probably can, I, I wish I can, I don't, I don't know if I can go and see the number amount of videos that I can watch on YouTube. Yeah. But I'm interested to know how many hours I have spent on it. Yeah watching photo shoots, watching Photoshop, watching posing tutorials. I'm not, I don't have to pose, but I watch posing videos. Yeah. Um, just learning your craft. That's the number one thing in business. All the technical stuff don't mean nothing if you're out here uh, making mistakes that you can't recover from. Right. So people, um, like I got my business license. I got, yeah, you got your business license. Yeah, you got your business page, but what about the actual business? Yeah. Are you able to provide the service that you're announcing? Yeah. That you're at? so the quality of the product that you're presenting. Yeah, make sure that's the that's first and foremost. Yeah. I remember my first I probably charged twenty dollars. It was a photo shoot. She was like, What'd you charge? I'm like, twenty dollars. In her head, she probably was laughing. Mm-hmm. This ain't like in 1932, $20. <laughs> like in, I don't know. 1932, 20 Yeah, right. This is you know, 2007, 2008. I'm probably, probably within, 
I started in 07, but probably by the end of 07 or early, mid 08, I'm at a point where like, okay, I can kind of charge, I can charge now. But I wasn't charging like I was a 10 year veteran. Yeah. I was charging like I was my first year. Right. So I'm like, so my thing, so in her head, she probably was laughing $20. But for me, it was like, I can put some gas in my tank. Yeah. So for me, if that's always how I looked at it. I'm like, okay, I know I'm at the, what, what you charging? Bring me a bottle. And that sounds crazy, bring me a bottle. It's like, okay, I'm getting something. I, I feel like it's not free and I'm still getting something out of it. Bring me a bottle. Bring me a snicker. One chick, I said, bring me, it's not a chick. One lady, I said, bring me a snicker. I was joking. And she brought me a Snickers bar. I'm like, okay, I can barter. But you know, the biggest thing you're getting out of it is um, experience. Experience is the best teacher. Yeah, so now, if I charge three, four hundred, I don't, I don't feel bad about it. Exactly. I, it's, I put that much work in. I've done enough free stuff. I've paid my dues. So now I can name my price. I told you I was going to ask you. I'm going to need the answer to this, or I'm going to come to your crib, take all your cameras, and hold them hostage. Man. Where is the founder you that you found, bro? Man. I know Keep you found sh- it. I know you know where it's at. Keep the stress down, man. Keep the stress down. Like we talk about mental health and stuff like that. That stuff can wear on you. Keeping the keeping your stress down. Yeah. Finding out. Um, me working with these different people keep me young. Yeah. You know, I'm working with people that's in their 20s. I'm 42 years old. I'm working with people in their 20s. So when they come, they got these different music I've never heard before. Yeah. They're using different terminology I never used before. So that's externally, like as far as founding a youth. Um, an expression like okay i'm still kind of hip but right. as far as physically i still drink mad you know i, I i'm a vegetarian mm-hmm. i've been a vegetarian since um june 2017 so going on going into my fourth year of being a vegetarian um water i always was mad drink mad water because i ain't know i ain't know a whole lot about health but i know that i need water i know that's the number one thing drink water so i drink a gallon of water a day um, stress down, drink mad water. Now, I, I don't know what else to, and, and then genetics, you know what yeah. I mean? So, but those, other than that, those are two, two good things, though, right? And laughing, like you know, because I'm on you see me on, on social media, cut people are probably like, How does he get away? I'm on social, I don't care, yeah, I'll say because it's, it's, it's all, like it's all jokes, man, it's all jokes for one, and then two, no one on there. My mom's not on my my mom's not on my social media. Mm-hmm. Everyone else after that, if it ain't my mama, mm-hmm. I don't care about how you feel about me or what you. I care how my mother thinks of me, and I care how my daughter thinks of me. After that, I don't care what y'all think of me because at the end of the day, you don't know that I'm a twenty year retiree. Right. You don't know that I, like they might think that I'm some just ratchet dude on here just saying whatever. Like no nah, man, I serve my country. Yeah. I'm I'm a veteran. Y'all don't know that. Like I have a business, so I'm a black business owner. I'm a veteran. I'm a father. My kids are doing well. So if I say something on this internet and y'all don't like it, I don't care about y'all opinion. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's so being able to be free. Yeah, that keeps me young. Um, be, being able to express myself artistically, socially, and having my ducks in a row. That's my fountain of youth. Man, so, yeah. and we'll leave it at that.